Welcome back everyone. Today I'm addressing something that I probably should have addressed some time ago. As you know I've been working on more and more valve based equipment uh, for the last little bit and I've not really been working probably as safe as I should have been. So today I'm uh, just going through building a little bit of um, test or safety gear that I'll be using from now on on the workbench. Basically it's a dim light tester but it has an isolation transformer built into it as well. So isolation transformer for my safety and dim light tester for the safety of the device that I'm working on. Okay well let's have a look at it now. Okay, so let's have a look at the circuit. It's uh, not that difficult. Got two bits to it here. Um, the first part is what was actually built, and the second part down here is a simplified um, version of the above. So let's have a look at the simplified version to start off with. Okay, so in this version, I've just removed a lot of the wiring that's really not relevant to the to the actual operation of the dim light tester. Basically, uh, we've got a 240 volts coming across here from our isolation transformer, although it could just as easily come um, straight from mains. And this could be used for 110 as well, it's not just 240. 240 is the mains voltage we actually have here in Australia. So that voltage just presents here to three switches. The first switch at the bottom here is the bypass switch, so when that's on, you'll note that the 240 volts just go straight through to the output socket and the um, neutral, or in my case I'm using an isolation transformer, so there's no notion of neutral and active, but at any rate, the other side of this 240 goes onto the output socket as well. So when that's closed, the full 240 volts is applied to uh, the output socket. Now when that's off we've got the option of switching two of these lights in series with the output and essentially if we just turn this top one on you'll see that this is one light in series with the output. When current's drawn we're actually getting a voltage drop across this lamp and we're also getting a visual indication of the amount of current that's drawn by how bright it is and um, protecting the output device and of course we can put one uh, size lamp in here and a different size lamp in here and uh, depending on which one we have turned on will protect the output uh, differently and of course there's also the option of actually turning both on at the same time and so effectively we've got three different levels here of protection and that gives you different options when you've got different devices that need more current to operate. So different levels of protection and also supporting different devices. Okay, so that's the, the basic operation. Let's go back to the um, fuller circuit now and I'll just show you what all the rest of the guff associated with it is. Okay, so this is the fuller circuit at the top here and still left the uh, simplified version down the bottom. So essentially we've got the input socket here and I've actually used an IEC connector there and there's something missing off here. There's my really crappy representation of a fuse. So I actually have a fuse installed in the device as well. I think it might have been a 5 amp fuse from memory just for some protection. That comes through to uh, our main on off switch and I've wired uh, both the neutral and the active uh, onto that switch. These switches are, are actually lit, um, they have a lamp in them to let you know when they're on so I need the actual neutral and active both on there to actually get that lamp to light up. Um, so we've got that switch and that just supplies the primary of the isolation transformer. So the secondary of the isolation transformer will not be referenced to earth 
Okay, so that affords a level of protection in that you still need to be careful if you put yourself across here. You're, you know, that's life threatening. However, you know, touching here in reference to this ground, you're protected. This whole circuit here just ends up floating and is not referenced to ground at all. So if you touch, if as long as you just touch one point of it, there's no reference to ground. So that affords a level of safety. Anyway, uh, as you'll note, uh, coming out of that transformer, essentially the circuit is much the same in that you know we have these um, three switches, the two lamps and the bypass, and that goes directly to the output. And the the other side of the 240 volts basically just comes down to the output socket. The only difference, and the reason I did this, is because this neutral here being connected to all these switches just adds a level of well, not so much complexity but confusion I suppose as to what's going on here it's not needed for the operation of the dim light tester however as I mentioned earlier uh, these uh, switches have lamps in them and to get them to work when I turn this one on I need that other side of the 240 volts connected here because the lamp is effectively across well, it's effectively across here so to get that to turn on I need to have that neutral so I've just run those new the neutral to the other side of these switches here now that's pretty much it for the circuit uh, let's take a bit of a look at the construction of this device now Okay, so I had a problem with this and the problem was related to the size of the transformer that I selected. Rightly or wrongly I selected a transformer that was capable of uh, 2 amps, so uh, 500 watt and 
what I found is on powering this up even with no load on the on the device I was actually tripping the uh, circuit breaker I have on my uh, workbench which is a 10 amp circuit breaker and I, I probably should have thought about this but um, you know hindsight's always 2020 with this transformer we're on 240 volts here in Australia so 2 amps 240 volts the inrush current on these toleroids could be huge like 100 amps for that single half phase as it starts up so what I've done I, I've ordered some thermistors that are specially designed for this to uh, limit the current on startup so on startup the resistance is um, relatively high in the thermistor and uh, that limits the current into the transformer and then as the device heats up its resistance reduces to close to zero so it effectively just limits that current through that first half phase as the as the transformer creates that magnetic field at startup and I've given it a try it never happened every time but you know it might happen one out of four times you turn the device on which is obviously unacceptable so I've plugged it in to the mains and given it a try and it certainly seems to have resolved the issue so I'll publish the circuit diagram but effectively there's just the thermistor in series with the the primary transformer winding so there we go um, let's uh, put it all back together and uh, see how it works uh, with the radio plugged into it radios off let's turn the power on and let's put uh, one light the first light in series now if I turn the power on I've only got two lights the same size at the moment but uh, I think these are both what are they they're 40 watts so probably put a 40 in a and something a bit bigger 60 or something like that so that it can run 40 or 60 or put them both in in um, parallel but if we just turn it on now what we should see is that light come on quite bright um, to start off with as everything um, as everything starts up and then as uh, as things charge up it should go back down to a duller sort of brightness and I'm not too sure how well you can pick that up on camera but that's effectively what we're seeing it's actually you know quite quite dull now but obviously there's um, quite a bit of current going through there I think what I will get is a uh, one of those power meters that I can just plug in here that um, you know, does voltage current and um, and power so I can just plug it in there uh, to get the readout I did toy with putting uh, one on the actual device but in all honesty when I started looking around for devices I couldn't find anything that was particularly reasonable in price so I think just an external plug-in will, will uh, just have to do the trick um, which is okay I can live with that but, um, yeah not much not much sound coming out of the radio let me just try bypassing it so it's quite a bit louder let me just try it yeah that's obviously increased the voltage putting the two in parallel um, so 
the whole idea of this is if there's a short circuit or something nasty in the radio then all of the power is going to be developed across the light globe um, you'll get an indication that there's a problem but also it will limit the current through the through the actual um, the, any short that may be there or anything like that so protection device for the protection for the device and with the isolation transformer there protection for me when I'm working on it um, so I should have done this some time ago and I hadn't really been working on that much valve, valve gear or mains operated gear so I hadn't really worried about it too much however I'm sort of I've got a few bits and pieces out in the garage to look at so it's something I wanted to address now just to make things a little bit safer here for me um, anyway uh, that's pretty much it you'll be seeing this being used when I'm working on valve gear from now on um, okay well cheers for now if you like what I'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new and I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at